Good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we got a dangerous day ahead. A violent tornado outbreak could spawn some violent long track tornadoes, damaging winds over 75 miles per hour, and large hail across the deep south as we go into your Tuesday tomorrow. And we'll also be talking about some mountain snowfall across the Pacific Northwest and the Sierra Nevadas going into next week. And we'll also be tracking here our next big system as we get in towards the middle of December. If you guys are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates. It helps more than you think and it's free to do, so hit the subscribe button down below everyone and also the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. I cover Canada, the United States, and the tropics, so definitely, like I said, hit that subscribe button down below. Looking here as we get into the afternoon, we got a very big trough starting to dig down across the western United States here and this is going to be our next big powerful storm system that's going to be bring all of the mountain snow to the Pacific Northwest and you can see that mountain snow here being reflected on the hazard map. We have winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings across places here of Oregon, Washington State getting into Idaho and much of the Rockies as well where they're looking to uh, see some rather significant mountain snowfall here for those ski resorts out there as we go through this afternoon and really into your Tuesday. You can see all that snowfall across portions of the Pacific Northwest refilling some of those ski resorts out there. So if you're a skier and you like the snowfall, this is the place to be across the Pacific Northwest. And that's with all those cooler temperatures. We'll have high temperatures across portions of Montana, getting into Wyoming and Idaho, actually into the teens and 20s, especially in those higher elevations as we go into the afternoon today. But preceding the big storm system, that powerful storm I was talking about with that trough is going to be some warmer air across the central and southern plains will be warming back into the 50s if not the 60s across much of Texas, Oklahoma and getting into Kansas and Nebraska and farther to the east here as well and again with that snowfall here to the Pacific Northwest that's where all the colder air will be again some of this snowfall will be sticking around here and some of the lower elevations as well but as you go higher up that's where you can start to see several inches accumulate especially into portions of western Oregon State where they could be seeing double digit snowfall totals here in those higher elevations there as we go through the next 24 hours but then as we get into Tuesday trouble is coming up because we actually do have a powerful storm system like I said that trough will start ejecting into the central and southern plains very big uh, cold pocket aloft with this system we have some very warm air preceding the system here on the system's front end and yes a moderate risk upgrade from the storm prediction center on the day two outlook has been issued here for portions of northwestern Minnesota, uh, northwestern mississippi northeastern louisiana southeastern arkansas and extreme southwestern tennessee even an enhanced risk here being expanded across the deep south as well and even again in those dark green areas and yellow areas we still could be seeing some severe weather in isolated fashion across southern illinois southern Indiana and getting into western Kentucky here. So a very big day ahead for severe weather, I think, later on in the day tomorrow and especially tomorrow evening across the deep south. So it really is important to understand these severe weather categories. This is a higher end event. We have the level three and now a level four upgrade. This is a moderate risk for tomorrow does mean high confidence that a lot of these storms will contain damaging winds, severe hail, and those tornadoes. And some of those tornadoes could be long track tornadoes as well and could be strong. And again, usually moderate risk days do not uh, come very often. These are similar to intense storms that you see, may see in your area maybe once per year or even less than that. So this is a pretty rare day coming up as we head into your Tuesday. So let's go over the overall hazards to expect for these storms as we go into later tomorrow. This is your tornado tornado outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, and they have upgraded the probability to a 15% risk, also a hatched risk here. You can see that significant shading there. Um, definitely seeing the potential for EF2 or stronger type tornadoes across western Tennessee, much of north central Mississippi, getting into northeastern Louisiana and eastern Arkansas. Definitely be on high alert as we go into later on tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And we also have another upgrade for the wind probabilities up to a 30% and also 
a hatched risk, especially in the north central Mississippi with wind gusts that could be up to around hurricane force, 75 miles per hour or stronger with this system. Even some wind probabilities farther to the north here across southern Illinois, southern Indiana, western Kentucky, and middle Tennessee. We still have to watch out for those strong damaging winds up to around 70 miles per hour across those areas. And then a lower end hail risk here uh, in the 5 to 15 percent shading in those green and yellow areas across the deep south. So definitely a big day ahead as we head into your Tuesday. And this does uh, come as a reminder. You do want to know where your safe place is for tornadoes. Tornadoes can be very dangerous here. Most of the time, your safe places are storm shelters and basements. If you do not have any storm shelters or basements available to you, an interior room without windows can be very protective. Stay away from those windows. If you receive a tornado warning, take shelter immediately. Every time you receive a tornado warning, take shelter immediately here as we go into the day tomorrow. I also did want to talk about this as well. Well, the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. A tornado watch means conditions are favorable for the development of thunderstorms that could produce tornadoes. Those supercell type thunderstorms that often do produce tornadoes. You want to stay informed in case a warning is issued and know where to take shelter. So be prepared. So that tornado watch means be prepared. Doesn't mean a tornado is going to occur imminently, but it means the conditions are favorable for the development of a tornado. But on the other side of the spectrum here, we have a tornado warning. Warning. That means a tornado is imminent. We could see, a, uh, you know, take shelter now. Tornadoes are imminent with the tornado warning. Go to your basement. Go to your interior room. Stay informed on the forecast and take action. That's what a tornado warning means. Also, you want to have multiple ways to get warnings, whether it's a NOAA weather radio, a wireless emergency alert system here with weather apps such as Radar Omega here, great weather app, the internet in general, you have local TV and radio, you could listen to us here on YouTube, or you could have family and friends messaging you here if they live across the country letting you know about that. And again, you don't want to always rely on this, but even outdoor sirens here uh, could help as well so keep you safe from all these uh, tornado warnings out there as we head into tomorrow. So let's look at the overall big picture and why we're seeing this severe weather. We have a powerful cold front here moving through the center of the country as we head into Tuesday afternoon. And again, preceding that cold front, we have temperatures uh, rising well into the 60s and 70s, some mid 70s getting pulled all the way north here into Mississippi, Louisiana, and East Texas. We have the dew points rising here into the 60s and low 70s, especially across eastern Texas, getting into Louisiana and really up here into Mississippi as well. Out of the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of moisture trailing here all the way to the north, even even some 50 degree dew points all the way up to the Chicagoland area. So you definitely know that this time of year when you get dew points in the 60s, you're causing some trouble here with the regards to some severe weather. And we have a very energetic jet stream. The 500 millibar winds, the mid-level jet rounding the base of this trough is going to be very energetic here across the mid-south and deep south as we head into tomorrow afternoon and evening. And take a look at this as well here. Look at the jet stream forecasted here for tomorrow with those southwesterly winds in the mid-levels. And look at back here on December 10th and 11th of 2021. That was the tornado outbreak that caused that Mayfield tornado. And these are the jet stream winds during that time frame as well. And you can see very similar pattern here in the mid-level jet um, during that period as we see on your Tuesday tomorrow. So this is very concerning. And again, that low-level jet is also going to be pretty active as well with the 850 millibar low-level jet pumping in around 60 knots or higher across this area. A lot of turning of the winds with height. We got winds at the surface out of the southwest. And then just a little bit stronger here, a little bit uh, you know, faster up in the atmosphere and changing direction with height will produce some of those rotating supercell thunderstorms that we look for. So much so that we do have significant tornado parameters here already hitting pretty high on the scale up to almost six on the scale here. So this is pretty impressive here and we're still a day out. So these values could still increase and that really centers on northwestern Mississippi and really across the entirety of that enhanced and moderate risk zone that I showed you. And again, this is in general northwest Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi region, I did take a sounding here, and we are seeing a PDS tornado tag, which means we could be seeing some of those EF2 or stronger type tornadoes, and we actually have a 100% match for tornadoes here with supercell thunderstorms on this sounding across that northwest Mississippi region as we head into the afternoon and evening for your Tuesday. So let's track this out. Tuesday morning here, 6 a.m., we got some scattered sprinkles and showers across East Texas. Not much going on here, but as we get toward midday, midday 
today we're going to start to heat things up here. We have that warm air advection out of the western Gulf of Mexico. We start to see these individual semi-discrete and even at times discrete supercells develop as early as the noon hour. And these are the cells that we have to watch for those tornadic uh, potential uh, produce, uh, producing storms that could also be producing damaging winds, large hail, and of course heavy rainfall, that frequent lightning out there. And then it's really prime time for uh, supercell thunderstorms and tornadoes later on Tuesday afternoon around the 5 p.m. time frame here. We could have these individual supercells. Each one of these could have tornado warnings on them, and we could be seeing long track, very strong tornadoes across the deep south, across Mississippi, Louisiana, eastern Arkansas, getting into western and middle Tennessee, and even western Alabama as we head into the evening hours on your Tuesday. Again, you want to have multiple ways to get warnings, and the worrisome thing is that this is going to be after dark. So a lot of these tornadic thunderstorms will not really be getting going until after dark. Um, the daylight hours are a lot shorter now, so you definitely want to have multiple ways to receive warnings across the deep south. And I probably will be going live tomorrow for sure to cover some of this uh, weather out there tomorrow late afternoon and evening. So you want to tune back in, turn on all notifications for that. We'll also be talking about heavy rainfall across the deep south. You can see in the blue and purples here, that's where we can see one to three inches of rain, especially centered on Mississippi, Alabama, and Middle Tennessee. So that will be uh, an another element that we have to worry about is some isolated flash flooding. And then back to the west, that cold front is going to packing quite a punch across portions of the Dakotas and much of the mountain west here in the western United States. You can tell a big temperature dif difference here um, across portions of Iowa. Eastern Iowa, you'll be in the upper 40s, but western Iowa, you'll be uh, moving back into the low 20s, if not upper teens. And then this cold front will be surging east here as we get into the day on Wednesday, bringing potentially another lower end severe weather threat across the east as we head into the Wednesday time frame. But we also also do have some snowfall to talk about on the system's cold side here up to the north across the upper Midwest and northern plains all the way back to the Rockies. We got some snowfall that could be flying around here um, as we head into the Tuesday night time frame into Wednesday. And then the system's cold front moves through all that snowfall to move up toward Wisconsin and the western Great Lakes. And we kind of have a shield of rainfall, some thunderstorms in here, maybe some severe weather as we head into Wednesday afternoon and evening across portions of the mid-Atlantic and the southeast. And then that will clear itself off to the east. But look Looking at your snowfall amounts here as we head through the next 24 to 48 hours, yes, we could be talking about a few inches of snow from the Colorado Rockies getting back here through Nebraska, northwestern Iowa, the Twin Cities here into southern Minnesota, and especially northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan, we could be seeing anywhere from three to six plus inches of snowfall as we head into that time frame, and then that will track up into Ontario and Quebec, where we could have widespread snowfall amounts there of six to ten inches ac across central Ontario and northern Quebec as we go into the first few days of December. Then behind that, we got a high pressure system working in, some clearing, but but then we got to worry about our next storm system behind that, bringing lots of mountain snow across the Pacific Northwest. Another powerful trough will be digging down across the Pacific Northwest, turning into early December on Thursday, December 1st. This will be extending across portions of British Columbia, Alberta, all the way south here through the Pacific Northwest, places like Idaho, Montana, Washington State, getting into Oregon State, and even Northern California. Out ahead of that, though, we're going to see a ridge start to build across the eastern United States during this period. And that will warm things up as well. But looking here through the next 120 hours, going through the next five days, this is your rainfall across much of the lower 48 here. Um, we're going to see lots of rainfall uh, slamming into places like the Pacific Northwest here from western Oregon, wa western Washington, all the way down through the Sierra Nevadas here into California, replenishing some of that moisture across those areas. And again, considering some of that moisture, we have lots of snowfall across the Sierra Nevadas getting into northern California. We could be seeing feet of snowfall here, potentially two, three, even four feet of snow is not out of the realm of possibility here as we go through the next few days going into the first few days here in December and also looking up across the Pacific Northwest, the upper elevations there in Montana, Idaho, getting back across Washington and Oregon, Northern California. Yeah, feet of snow are on the way. Even in the lower elevations, places like Seattle or Portland, Oregon, we could be seeing even a few inches of snow dropping here and accumulating on the ground, at least on the grassy surfaces as we go into the next few days. 
But then as we get into the long range pattern, go into that first full week in December, you can see likely below normal temperatures will be favored across much of the Pacific Northwest while we have warmer than normal temperatures from Texas to Florida all the way up the East Coast going all the way through Wednesday, December 7th. That really continues and has lots of staying power all the way through Sunday, December 11th here across the Northwestern United States. And again, the warmer air will be sticking around here in relative fashion here across the East Coast, uh, the East Coast getting into Florida as we get all the way through that December 11 time frame. The active pattern will also be sticking around. You see a lot of green showing up here across the uh, inner mountain west, getting into portions of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Lots of storm systems traversing through the country here from coast to coast. So that is some good news, replenishing some of that moisture going all the way through the 7th of December. And again, that holds true going all the way through Sunday, December 11th into that second week in December. We still have that active pattern here, especially across the Ohio Valley as we get into that time frame here. Um, into the, towards the middle of December. And that also spells trouble because we do have the polar vortex making another, uh, uh, making another move on us here across portions of the northern plains into the southern Canadian provinces here. We could be talking about colder than normal temperatures with some of that Arctic air dropping south from Canada into the northern plains. And that is especially true as we have a very strong ridge of high pressure building in across the Aleutian Islands, spiking all the way up into Western Canada and Alaska as we go into that second week, especially in December. And that's where you can see that Arctic push of air. We definitely have high temperatures. Yes, these are high temperatures going into Wednesday, December 7th. We could be seeing below zero high temperatures across North Dakota, parts of South Dakota, Western and Northwestern Minnesota, and especially getting into Southern and Southwestern Canada here, places like British Columbia, Alberta, and portions of Saskatchewan in Manitoba there as well. We'll be seeing lots of colder temperatures, high temperatures there in minus 20 to minus 30 degree range. And then when you factor in the wind chill with those winds out there, we could be seeing, yes, 30 to even 40 uh, degrees or, or lower wind chills across these areas. So I do expect at least some wind chill advisories across portions of the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest as we get towards that first and even especially that second week in December. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked the video, definitely hit that uh, like button down below. That's that thumbs up button. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today. And most importantly, guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you guys for subscribing, all the new subscribers out there. And also hit that notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates. I will be going live later this evening at 6 p.m. Central Time to cover this. Uh, any of your questions out there about this tornado outbreak unfolding across the Deep South. So make sure to tune in there. And another reason to turn on all your notifications. Have a great Monday, everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video.